the vicious cycle focuses on this sort of feedback loop of this thing leads to more things, which leads to more things, which leads back to this thing, right? And the downward spiral is this sort of feeling of, you know, being flushed down a toilet, I guess, for lack of a better, a better word. It's going actually downward and worse and worse and worse. And you can use downward spiral for more types of things. How do we express that we can't stop doing something, that we're addicted to something, whether it's video games or shopping or snacks or drugs or whatever? How do we talk about that whole experience of trying to stop doing that and feeling that we're stuck inside of that, right? Well, we're just going to go over some common language that we can use in that sort of situation. Now, a common word that you will hear is hooked. And it makes sense, right? But this can be used in both a positive and a negative way. So what is a hook? A hook is something like that that you would use to catch a fish, right? And if you imagine a fish being caught by the mouth, we can sort of use that as a visual to to express the feeling of I can't stop doing this. It's like I'm caught by the mouth with a hook, right? Again, whether it's shopping or coffee or snacks, you can say then on after it to describe what it is. I'm kind of hooked on, uh, hooked on shopping, let's say. But I did mention, I did mention that we could use this in not necessarily a negative way. Well, there was a program, I don't know if it's still going on, but hooked on phonics. Phonics being a way of teaching the phonetics of a language. It was a sort of educational program. I don't know if it still exists. But that's a way to say I can't stop doing that, but that's a good thing. That's an educational thing, right? If someone says I'm hooked on exercise... I'm hooked on exercise. Well, is that a bad thing? No, not necessarily. I am absolutely hooked on this novel. So it could be something very specific. A novel you're reading, you feel like you can't stop reading it. So it's okay to say that you're hooked on that novel, and that doesn't necessarily have the negative connotation that, for example, being hooked on shopping might have, or hooked on snacks might have. Okay, so it can be used either way, depending on what it is that you're hooked on. It's usually not a bad thing to say that you're hooked on, <laughs> that you're hooked on exercise. But then, when we talk about our intention to stop that, then we're talking usually about things that have a negative influence on us. And we say often the phrase, I'm trying to, trying to quit. This is, this is the process of maybe I want to stop doing this, but I don't know how to do it, and I'm in the middle of this process. Okay, so for example, it's cigarettes. You smoke a pack a day. Day one, you smoke half uh, a pack a day. Day two, you smoke three cigarettes. Day five, you smoke one cigarette a day. So this would be a way to slowly quit, and the process of doing it is trying, right? If someone, though, says, I've been trying to quit smoking. I've been trying to quit smoking. That suggests it gives a connotation that they're kind of failing, right? They've tried a few times. They tried different ways, slowly quitting, and maybe they tried cold turkey. So cold turkey would be to suddenly stop doing something. That is one method for kicking for kicking oh i'm not, not i don't want the the n for kicking a bad habit how do you quit a bad habit how do you kick a bad habit kick and quit means the same thing kick feels a little more natural a little bit maybe more casual i do it cold turkey i wanted to quit drinking coffee i just stopped i wanted to quit smoking i just stopped I wanted to quit my heroin addiction. I just 
stopped cold turkey it was very difficult but it was effective because i did it very suddenly okay we could also say that we have when we're doing this why is it hard to quit well we have a dependence now a dependence is a feeling that we need it in order to function properly i would say to be totally honest with you i have a dependence on coffee now there are different types of dependencies you might have a psychological dependence you might have a uh, a chemical dependence a chemical dependence would be your body actually does need it in order for you to feel okay and a psychological one would be you're just used to it you're in the habit of it right so if you have a if you have a dependence on on coffee maybe you feel a craving for coffee every day that you don't drink it because you're so used to doing it but if you have a chemical dependence on coffee maybe you actually get a physical headache if i don't drink coffee tomorrow morning i will get a very bad headache so i know that i have a major dependence on coffee but i have no plans to kick the habit because i from what i can tell coffee is not that unhealthy as far as i know right another way we can talk about stopping this you might use you might say to get off to get off it i want to get off cigarettes and often instead of saying the activity we'll actually use the thing there i want to get off cigarettes i want to get off drugs i want to get off uh, i want to get off video games if you're addicted to video games for some reason, get off shopping doesn't sound quite right to me. And I'm I'm not, well, I guess that would be the activity. So maybe that's the reason. But quitting shopping cold turkey doesn't really make sense as a phrase because you have to buy stuff. You have to shop. And so quitting that would mean not buying anything. So it's a little fuzzier when it comes to, uh, when it comes to shopping. Okay, now, how do we describe this phrase? This terrible loop often we describe this sort of thing as a as a circle right where you stop doing something and then you feel miserable and maybe because you feel miserable you start doing it again this is what a this is what an addict an addict will describe maybe a drug addict for example might describe or maybe a, an addict a smoking addict will describe there's this thing where once I stop, that makes me want it more, or once I stop, that causes problems in my life that leads to depression, and that makes me want to go back to it. And this happens quite often with especially drug addiction, where someone might be totally addicted to a very harmful drug, um, and because of that, they lose their job. And because they lose their job, they feel depressed. And because they feel depressed, they do more of the drug. But because they do more of that, then they need money. And because they need money, they maybe do something illegal to get it. And to get that, they need it. So it keeps going around. This is called a vicious cycle. And sometimes it's used uh, as circle. Vicious suggests that as it goes around, it kind of gets worse and worse, and it's kind of unending, never ending, because it goes around and around all the time. Sometimes if this leads to death or prison or something really terrible, we might describe it as a downward spiral. What's the difference between a vicious cycle and a downward spiral? The vicious cycle focuses on this sort of feedback loop of this thing leads to more things, which leads to more things, which leads back to this thing, right? And the downward spiral is a sort of feeling of, you know, being flushed down a toilet, I guess, for lack of a better, a better word. It's going actually downward and worse and worse and worse and you can use downward spiral for more types of things you might use downward spiral to talk about the failure of a business or the economy you might use downward spiral to talk about maybe uh, bad relationships between family family members things just getting worse and worse in that way or someone's life maybe they one thing starts and then leads to another bad thing and another that is a downward spiral so this, these phrases are common for talking about things we feel like we can't quit. 
and then once we start to get out of it, we might use something like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, that would be you're walking through a dark tunnel and you see a pinprick of light. And hopefully it's not a train. Hopefully it's the end of the tunnel. That is another expression <laughs> or another way to say it. Sometimes people say, I saw a light at the end of the tunnel and it was a train <laughs> coming toward me. But hopefully the light at the end of the tunnel is the end of whatever you want to stop. You're playing six hours of video games a day. You want to quit. You are able to slowly reduce it, manage it, and you see a light at the end of the tunnel, meaning maybe building better habits to not have that problem, to not have that addictive personality about video games or whatever you're addicted to. So if you have any questions about this, let me know. If you haven't already done so, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And also feel free to check out my full courses in the links in the description.